Well, it's certainly another source of excitement for sports fans here in the UAE. Now, it's been dubbed the biggest internet security threat the world has ever seen. Heartbleed allows hackers to steal valuable data like credit card numbers and passwords by exploiting holes in website security. One study estimated that half a million websites have fallen victim to this vulnerability. So what should you do to keep yourself safe and just how much of a danger is there to your smartphone? Well, here to help us answer these questions and more is Mohammed Amin Hasbini, a senior sec security rather, researcher at Kaspersky Lab Middle East. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much for taking the time. So just to set the scene for our viewers out there who may not know in detail what Heartbleed is, uh, explain it to us. Yes, we, we like to describe uh, Heartbleed you, you know, in, simple, in a simple scenario. We have a big application that is used all over the internet. We, we, we think that it is used on two thirds of the internet servers. This application uh, usually is used to protect our communication to protect our uh, services. So it's like a security application. It's like a security application uh, that protects our communication with e-banking, with emails, with uh, e-shopping services, e-government. Everything is protected by using this application. Now, uh, we, we found that there is a big vulnerability or a weakness in this application. This weakness enables a hacker or a criminal to see all of our traffic, to see all of our passwords, our credit cards, our emails, everything is just viewable for, for, for the criminals. Now, this application is called OpenSSL, and this vulnerability is called Heartbleed. I mean, the question, of course, I'm sure everyone's asking is how, with an application you're saying may service two-thirds of the internet uh, in terms of security, how could a vulnerability of this magnitude go unnoticed? Well, uh, mistakes do happen. <laughs> Big mistakes do happen. <laughs> Big mistakes also do happen, but we, we, we are seeing some, some problems with uh, th this project, actually. This is an open source project, and uh, it was run by uh, 10 engineers, 10 programmers, and one of them only was a full-timer. The others were part-timers or volunteers, and they had $2,000 donations per, per year. Why and do you think there's such a disconnect between the amount of funding put into something that seems so crucial to internet security and obviously well, the, the, the scale of the projects used on? Well, I, I, we think that people uh, used to believe that this uh, service or this project is safe, and then everything is going fine. Hmm. And this is the open source community. It's like so funded by donations. I mean, do you think then there's a need for the system that we use when it comes to developing software or programs like this? Should that be really evaluated by the internet community, by the, uh, I was saying by the IT community as well? Yes, yes, exactly. This is already in place, and we have seen an increase, actually, especially after this, this weakness uh, has been revealed. We have seen an increase in the audits on, on software and, uh, uh, and security applications used by the internet services. Okay, well that's, that's, that's mildly comforting, but I mean, what do people need to do to, ta uh, to protect themselves? I mean, certainly we've heard changing passwords, things of this nature, but how big of security risk is this for the average person? Well, uh, for, for this is, considering the heart bleed specifically, this is a weakness from a server side. So this is a weakness from the bank, or the servers at the bank, or the government, or the e-shopping service, and it is not uh, uh, for, for the user to do anything. So there is no control from the user perspective. Well, that, that, that certainly <laughs> doesn't sound comforting. I mean, is there anything that uh, myself as an individual, I mean, again, uh, I, I've heard, you know, sort of calls to at least go and change all of your, 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 your important passwords at the very least, uh, you know, uh, because supposedly this, this uh, exploit has not been resolved. Yeah. That's something that you can do. I mean, is that a, a bare minimum that people should be doing? Well, uh, th there are multiple measures that could be implemented from a user perspective, and uh, we see that uh, uh, in case there was a damage from, from the bank side or from the government, they usually request the, the, their users to change their passwords or change their keys, etc. Uh, the other measures include you know, protection on the user devices, like uh, implementing security services, not installing, uh, for example, random applications or uh, malicious applications, not visiting malicious websites, uh, and uh, m most probably not uh, not installing cracked applications. This is this is also uh, another concern. Well, I mean, <laughs> certainly many concerns there. I guess uh, it's something we'll more or less take the usual precautions that you're told to take. Um, something else w I wanted to, to discuss with you, uh, sort of on the side, uh, following on from from the heartbeat bleed uh, issue, is is smartphones. How much in danger they are? I know that viruses targeted towards smartphones have gone up, I think, about two thousand percent. How worried should we be about the smartphones? I mean, certainly uh, everyone seems to have one these days. Yes, exactly. Uh, you know, where there is money, there will be fraudsters looking for for the money. And uh, our our smartphones are currently they are like our our computers. 
we don't really use computers anymore. We have our email services, we have our uh, e-banking, we have our uh, what e-government services, uh, we have our usernames and passwords for social networking accounts, and everything is on our smartphones, and it's directly connected to the internet anytime, anywhere. And uh, this is uh, this is very interesting, and this is actually uh, very enticing for for the criminals to look for. Uh, this information that you have. So how do we protect ourselves there? I mean, w w there aren't the same sort of antivirus programs, quote unquote, you, know, you see on computers on, on yes, smart yes. smartphones, for example. Yes, we, you can, you can, you can install or you know deploy security services or security programs on your devices, and this is this is a main thing for for uh, the, you know the security of your uh, of your devices. And uh, look for the information that you put on your devices. Look for the applications. Usually, for example, your smartphones will tell you that when installing an application, this application will need the following permissions. Now look, why would an application need to look at my SMSs, my contacts, my personal files and folders and images, all right? And maybe see my, my, my traffic, my internet traffic. So looking at the permissions, this is user awareness. So looking at the permissions that an application is looking for is, is very important. Okay, we're, we're pretty much out of time, unfortunately. Just last question, because that was really interesting. You know, people worry about smartphones, about computers, but smart appliances can also be uh, a concern, right? Yes, exactly, exactly. Vendors look to sell you, the, the, you know, the, the pro their products with maximum features. Recent, uh, recent attacks have, have shown that hackers were controlling around 100,000 devices, 100,000 smart... And things like smart refrigerators, smart TVs, smart, smart, TVs. Refrigerators, smart uh, air conditioning, everything. Everything which has, uh, you know, c connectivity to the internet and they were launching attacks from these devices to the internet. And uh, th that's, uh, that's a huge concern, mainly because there I are... Is enough being done? Actually, you know, now we, we need security products for the smart uh, TVs and, and... So that's the, that's the next step. That's, n that's uh, most probably... All right, we'll have to talk about that next time. <laughs> We're out of time. Hamdi Amin, thank you so thank much you for stopping much. by. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, coming up after the break, will the UAE file...